Hey guys and welcome to Nickrit. My name is Cody and in today's video we're going to be doing the long-awaited and much requested Among Us crewmate. I have a lot of people who have put it all in my comments about how my Fall Guys guy looked a lot like the character from Among Us and that is really popular. I've been watching lots of Let's Plays for Among Us. Lots of fun and I wanted to do one for my channel. So this is a little astronaut from Among Us. As I've said, I'm pretty excited with how it turned out. I will be basically going, kind of piggybacking off of my last tutorial, which was the monster body. We're just not going to do the arms for this specific pattern. I will have a PDF printable for this on Ravelry that will be free and you can grab that at any point in time. You don't have to worry about coupon codes. The link for that will be down in the description down below. All right, so as I said, this is already a tutorial I have on my channel. You're going to want to create this basic body, which I have a tutorial for it down below. This is super easy. I'm gonna pop up the pattern for it just generally if you are one of those people that are comfortable with patterns. Otherwise, pop on over, create the body, and come back. All right, you're going to want to be comfortable with single crocheting, working on the round, doing increasing, and how to do a mattress stitch up the legs there. All right, so in addition to that pattern, we are also gonna be doing a double increase for the backpack. This is an interesting design. I kind of just wanted to make a little rectangle shape because it's fairly, it's, it's not quite square, but it's also not quite super rectangular. I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but the way that I do that is I'm kind of piggybacking also off of my um, tutorial on how to make the cock block and the tiny box Tim little square shape that I made, where essentially in order to create a corner, in order to turn a corner, we're doing a double increase. And I'll explain that in just a second when I show you how to do the backpack. But for this, you're going to want to have some worsted weight yarn. I am using uh, Lion Brand Heartland for the base here. I'm also using Lion Brand Heartland in the I think this one's called like Redwood and this one's called Black Canyon. You can use any kind of worsted weight yarn you want. I tend to try to use the same overall. That way it all looks the same. So use the same brand and the same like little subsect of whatever yarn it is. Use the same if you can help it, but you always have to go with different colors every once in a while. I'm also using Karen Simply Party because I don't know if it's showing well in the video at all, but in the pictures it might. It has this sparkliness to it that I really like. And I thought, hey, he's a space, he's a space man. They're out in space, they see stars, there's this sparkliness going on. So I'm using that as well. So just a white yarn, a black yarn, and whatever color body you want your guy to be. So they're, they come in all kinds of different colors. So you can do whatever you want. So basically this tutorial is gonna be going over how to make the backpack aspect of this and also how to do the visor. So go ahead, pop over to the other monster body tutorial. Do not make any arms unless you want your guy to have arms. And then there are also instructions on how to make arms if you really want him to have arms. I know they do have arms, but they typically walk around with their arms like so pressed in on themselves that you can't see it. So that's kind of the look I'm going for. Basically go over, make the body, come back here, and now we will work on the backpack. I'm using my size D3 or 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. I also stuffed my body with random stuffing. I had a big old giant box of stuffing, so I'm not sure the exact amount. You should be able to get away with just buying a pound of polyfill and this would make quite a few of your little crewmates here. I'm also going to be using a darning needle. I'm also going to be using some bamboo sticks in order to shove my face and my backpack onto the body and sew it on. It makes it a lot easier to sew these things on. Usually I'll take both of these, stab them across their bodies, and then attach it that way. I will show more of that with this tutorial. All right. D3 crochet hook. I'm using my Furls crochet hook. I have affiliate links for Furls crochet. So just to be completely transparent, if you're interested in Furls crochet, again, I have coupon codes down below. They are amazing. I love them. I fell in love with them before I became an affiliate and that's why I became an affiliate. I actually asked them for a code. So, all right, enough of that. Let's go ahead and start working on the backpack aspect. Okay, so for the backpack, we are going to turn that around so you can kind of have a visual of what we're working with. You're going to want to know how to do a double increase and also how to work through back loop only. I will show 
briefly how to do both of those, but I'm not gonna go in and like really go step by step and really slowly with it. For this, you're going to want to create your slip knot, like so. And we are going to put that on our hook and we are going to chain five. We're not gonna do any kind of magic ring funkiness. We're just going to chain one, chain two, three, four, and five. We are going to skip that fifth chain that we just made, and we're gonna start working into the next three chains. We're gonna go in like so, one, stitch inside that one, go into the next stitch, two, go into the stitch after that, three, and now you should have worked into all of your stitches except for the very last one. Well, you skipped one, you did three, you have one left, basically. And so for that, we're going to go inside that stitch and we're going to place three single crochet on the inside of it. This is essentially a double increase. So when I use the term double increase, we're gonna go back inside that same fifth stitch, add a second stitch, go inside that same stitch, and add a third stitch. We're essentially putting three stitches, one, two, three, inside the one stitch from a previous round. Here, we're going to turn our work and I like to keep my tail as if it is a part of my chains here. It makes it easier and it makes it so that the tail won't fall out anywhere. And we're going to start working into the next stitches on the very back side of it. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to skip this one right here because it's so tiny and so tight that I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm going to go into the next stitch and we're going to work into the back stitch of the next three stitches. Keep our tail as if it is a part of our work. One. Go into the next one. Two. Go into the next one. Three. Now we should have one stitch right here on the very tip. I'm still going to keep my tail, not bounce my camera hopefully, there we go, as if it is a part of my work and we're going to go inside that stitch right there. I keep the tail as if it is in the center of it, and we're going to put three stitches, we're gonna do a double increase inside of that. So one, two, and three. This is now the end of row one. We are going to keep our tail kind of pushed towards the back, and now you should have 12 active stitches. One, two, three, three from the original, then the three from your, your corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then you did three more on this side, and then you did three more for an increase. That adds up to 12. So now we're gonna start shaping our rectangle, essentially. We're going to single crochet into the next three stitches. So one, two, and three. You can put a stitch marker right there if you want. I use my tail as a stitch marker. So right now it's kind of just hanging out here, showing me where I want to be. We're going to then do a double increase on this stitch. So this is the first single crochet. This is the second. This is the third of your turning around your corner here. We're going to double increase there. So one, go back inside the same exact stitch, the fourth stitch of this row. Two, same stitch, three. So there should be three stitches within that same stitch right there. The next stitch, so the center of your double increase from before, we're just gonna single crochet one. And now we're gonna go into the third stitch from the previous round, from your previous first double increase, and we're gonna do another double increase. So one, go back inside the same stitch, two, Go back inside the same stitch, three. You can already see that it's starting to shape the bottom as if it is a rectangle. You're turning your corners. And so essentially we're gonna do that, what we just did twice. So we're gonna do that again. We're going to single crochet one, two, into the next stitch, and then three. And now we're back to where the second 
double increase was from our previous round. And we're going to do the exact same thing, where we take this and we turn it into a corner with a double increase. So one, two, three. Eee. Nope. Split our yarn. I always undo it. I'd rather undo it and then just redo it, because otherwise it won't be weird. Otherwise it will be weird if I don't do that. We're going to single crochet one into the center of that stitch right there and we're going to go into the last stitch from our previous round from row one and we're going to do another double increase so one two and three and essentially we just increased eight stitches one two three four five six seven eight so we went from 12 stitches and now you should have 20 stitches on your round at the very end of your round two all right we are now on round three and we're going to be going from 20 stitches to 28 stitches, and we're essentially going to do the exact same thing. I'm not trying to go off camera. There we go. We're going to single crochet four all the way up to the center of the previous double increase. We're going to go one, two. Actually, first, let's undo that real quick. We're back to just being on round two. We're going to take our tail, and this is my stitch marker, and I'm going to pull it through that last increase like so. That way I can see where my rows begin and where my rows end. Now we're going to single crochet four into row three. One, two, going down the side, three, and four. So from round two, we're, we just single crocheted into one of the stitches from the previous double increase. And now we're going to go inside the center stitch from our last row double increase. I hope that makes sense. And we're going to place another double increase inside that center. One, two. Nope, don't split that. I split it. Dang it. There we go. Two. And three. I'm going to pull my tail a little bit more like that. There we go. And now we have three stitches in the center between um, our next double increase. So we're going to single crochet one. two, and three, and now we're going to do another double increase. One, two, three, and now we are going to single crochet one on the other side, and we're going to want to do that twice. So we're going to single crochet another four, one, two, three, four. We're going to go along where the center of our last double increase was and put another double increase. One, two, three. Almost split that. We're going to do another single crochet across the next three stitches. One, two, three, do another double increase, one, same stitch, two, same stitch, three, and single crochet one again. We're going to take our tail, move it forward, and that was the end of row four, actually. Or no, that was the end of row three, sorry, my bad. That was the end of row three. So we're going to be going on to row four next, and this should be our last increase round. The goal essentially is to do a double increase on each of the corners as it goes outward and outward and outward. So if you're making a bigger one, just keep that in mind. So now we're also creating an extra stitch between each double increase on each side. So it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now we're going to single crochet five. In the last row we did four. So now we have one more extra because we did an increase on either side, giving us extra space between each increase on every single side. So single crochet one, two, three, four. I split it. There you go. Let's try to get that again. There you go. Four and five. Again, I'm working with really old yarn. I've been doing this for the last little bit because I'm trying to make up and uh, use up my stash during the quarantine situation and uh, it's making it hard for me because everything keeps snagging 
Um, so one, two, three, four, five. We are now going to do a double increase on this corner. So one, same stitch, two, same stitch, three. And now we should have five stitches between us and our next double increase. So one, two, three, four, five. And now we do another double increase because we've reached our corner again. One, try to get that undone. Same stitch, two, same stitch three so we are going to single crochet two one two after that and now we're going to repeat those same exact stitches but now we're going to flip it to the other side essentially so we repeat it twice we've gone from 28 stitches and i think now we're at 32 and we want to get up to 36 so we're going to single crochet five again so one two, three, four, I split my yarn again, dang it, four, and five. There we go. We're going to go on this corner and do a double increase. So one, two, and three, turn and go down five of the next side one two there we go three four five we're going to increase on this next corner one two three all in the same stitch not drop our yarn what are we doing here there we go and we're going to single crochet two one two so we've gone from round three having 28 stitches we just finished off round four that was our last increase round so now we have 36 stitches on our work as you can see that is all we're going to be doing for our increasing so next up oh, i split my yarn i'm going to undo that real quick there we go. I'm constantly splitting with this and I don't know what's going on. Well, I know what's going on just because it's old. Next up, we're going to want to kind of create this ridge that creates a little extra dimension. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I just prefer to look at the little ridges and it shows me kind of, I don't know, it just gives a little bit more of a backpack feel to it if you get what I'm saying. So how I achieve that is I'm going to essentially create that by only going through the back loop so this is called back loop only and it makes it so that the front loop creates this kind of ridge along the front if that makes sense so now i'm actually going to move my yarn forward just a little bit through the extra round and i'm going to start going through back loop only i'm just going to keep going along and along and i'm probably just going to fast forward this little bit right here because i'm just going through the back loop for the entire time even when I'm turning my corners, I'm not doing any kind of increasing. I'm just adding a single crochet for all 36 stitches for round five. Yes, we're on five. There you go. So we are now closing in on the last couple of stitches. Here we are on our last stitch here. We're going to plop in a back stitch. I think I did it tightly on purpose so that it would not look quite as strange when it goes over from being that to that. Should make it pretty simple. And now this is the stitch we're gonna wanna work into next. That is our next round. I'm gonna bring our tail forward. I don't know why that got popped out. My bad. All right, so now we're on row six and we're just gonna single crochet normal. And what I usually do is I'm just gonna go through the front loop to create this nice edge here. And I like how the back loop only creates this ridge. I think it makes it look a lot more 3D. So for row six, we are just single crocheting around. 
the entire way around and then I will show you how I actually attach this. It's super duper easy. We're just gonna fast forward through here too. So we're closing in on the last couple of stitches and on the very last stitch, instead of single crocheting it, this is our very last stitch, I'm actually going to just slip stitch like so and I'm going to leave that be. We're going to just take a tail and I like to leave a very long tail so I just did like 12 inches on the end. I'm going to pull that all the way through like so and I kind of just let that exist on its own like that and I'm going to take my tail over here and pull it through. I'm not going to cut it super short but I'm not going to cut it so that it's long either. That way it's kind of hidden. I'm going to put that with my tails which I use for stuffing as well and I'm going to kind of just square up the shape a little bit. What I like to do here is I'm going to designate which one's my back side. I think this is the front side and it looks better, so I'm going to use this as the back side. I'm going to line up wherever I want my backpack and I'm going to take my bamboo, like so, and I'm going to kind of just stab it through there. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite side, like so, and I'm going to kind of just start sewing it on to the back. I'm going to do the same method that I did for the arms. I do that pretty much for everything. And I like to just kind of designate where I want my guy here. I'm going to put my tail through the back and into the front of my stitch. And then when I go to the actual piece that I'm sewing, I'm going to go through from the front to the back. I'm going to do that the entire way around. I'm just going to keep going around and around and around. And as soon as I get close to the end, I will show you how I stuff. I also like to kind of pull on my tail a little bit. That way it is just a little bit snugger and it looks a little bit more, I don't know, just better in my opinion. So I'll show you when I get to about here with sewing how much I stuff. I don't stuff that much. I just stuff it to the point where it looks like a full backpack. All right, I'll be right back as soon as I get that mostly sewn and I'll show you what I do. I also try to go down as straight of a line as I can, so if I notice that my stitches were right here, I try to go right below where I went in previously in a straight line, if that makes sense. Um, I took my bamboo stick as soon as I crossed that corner, uh, it made it a little bit easier to deal with. I'm going to keep going in a straight line, and I also try to go slightly outside of where I'm sewing, that way it kind of stretches it out a bit, and that's okay. I'm going to keep going around and around and around. Pull my tail. I'm going to pull my bamboo stick out now because that's pretty much where I want it to be. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to turn my corner. So I'm actually gonna go like so and make it so that my corner is a little bit more triangular than not. I'm going to pull on my tail here so that it's not quite so far out. There we go. I'm turning my corner and I'm gonna kind of cup the corner like so. And there we go. This does not need that much stuffing. Honestly, it is easier to stuff it as soon as you've gotten about the halfway point of your last side. That way you don't have to worry about the shape of it too, too much. I'm going to keep going. And when I'm on this side, I try to go across the row as best I can. There we go. Oh, that needs to not do that. There we go. 
I have a noisy cars outside all night. The wind has been uh, wicked bad up here and it took out our internet. So that has been a fun adventure for us today. So I've got all this stuffing and I'm going to actually start stuffing now because we're about halfway through. And what I like to do is I like to focus on corners. So I'm definitely gonna put some in this corner. It gives it more shape. The more you put in each corner, the more definitive square shape you will have. So I like to focus on my corners as much as I can. Same thing with over here. Now that I've got that just slightly more than it was, I'm going to finish off mostly here. I'm gonna pull that tighter. Or tighter? Tighter. I'm not sure. There we go. I'm gonna close it up a little bit more now that I've added a good amount of stuffing in there. I don't know why I'm whispering, but you know. There we go. And I tug on my tail every couple of stitches. Oh, boink. All right, so now we only have this little bit left. And what I like to do, this is always the trickiest corner to try to get as much as I can in there. And what I like to do is I'm gonna ball up this yarn and I'm going to try to stick it in this corner right here. It's gonna be a little tricky. There we go. And we're going to try to ball it and try to cup it towards this corner here. And that should actually be good for my shaping of my backpack. I'm pretty happy with that. So we're gonna finish off this and finish sewing. I realize that this is not the easiest to see for stitch wise. There we go. Let's tug on our tail, go around the corner. Try to make it as square as you can as you're sewing. And this should be our last stitch and that'll close it up. All right, so now that we've done that, we're on our last stitch right there. It is all sewn up. We are nice and backpack shaped. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. We're going to take our needle and we're going to stab it through closest as you can to where your last stitch was. And we're going to stab it through the body as far away as you can. That way, if it does come undone for whatever reason, it's very far away from where it originated, so it will not come unraveled. We're going to cut our tail, and that's all there is to the backpack part of this tutorial. So now we're going to work on the visor. I need to go grab my yarn for that rope. Be right back. All right, so I've gone and fetched my white sparkle yarn. You could also use like a light blue yarn. I have a Red Heart Soft light blue that I could have used, but I really really like the sparkliness of this yarn so i'm going to do the exact same start essentially as my backpack except instead of chaining five we're going to chain nine and our goal is to not create a rectangle so much as an oval with this shape so what we're going to do is we're going to create a slip knot and chain nine i'm going to take my hook we're just going to chain quick little nine so one two three four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I always like to double check as much as I can and not take my hook off of my yarn. There we go. So first we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did last time. We're going to skip this last chain that we created and go into our eighth stitch right here. We're gonna single crochet one stitch into the next seven chains. So two, three, not split our yarn. There we go. Four, next stitch, five, Next stitch, six, 
pull our yarn a little bit out more. more. Next and last stitch, seven. We have one more stitch because we skipped our first, we did seven, and now we have one more left. We're going to do a double increase again. So in this last chain, we're going to place three stitches, two and three. We are going to turn our work. We are going to work into the next back chains of our stitches here for the next seven rows. We're going to repeat what we did essentially and do that again. So we're going to single crochet one. And I like to keep my tail again as a part of my work. It keeps it from unraveling a bit better. Two. Go back inside the chain. Three. The third chain anyway from your hook on the back side. Four. Five. Six. seven and now you have one chain left on the very end here we're going to do a double increase on that as well so one two three so what we should essentially have because we did this twice we should have 20 stitches on our work we had the seven from the original we did three inside of a single stitch, so that's seven plus three, that's ten. And we did that essentially twice. So we have 20 stitches on our work here, and we have the base of our little eye here as I bounce my camera. All right, so now for row two, we're essentially going to single crochet seven, increase, single crochet one, increase. We're not doing a double increase, we're just going to be putting two stitches inside of a single stitch. So we're going to single crochet up the side get to our little corner here. It's not really a corner because we're trying to make an oval. That's why we're not doing double increases. We're just doing the single one because we're not gonna be going for a rectangle shape. We're gonna be going for more of an oval, which makes it a bit more round and less harsh. So two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I want to increase, but I want it to be a bit more um, round. So we're just going to go inside our next stitch once and twice. Go inside the next stitch after that once. And then the stitch after that. These are all along the ink, the triple increase, essentially. And we're going to do two stitches there. And we're going to multiply this twice. So we're going to again go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Increase, so one, two, one in the next stitch, one, two. So now we should have 24 stitches on our work. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 24. We're going to take our tail and we're going to just pull that through and we are now on round three. All right, so I made a mistake when I was doing this and I had to go and undo it. So that's why the stitches look a little blown out, but it's fine. Basically, for rows three and four, um, we're just going to single crochet around the entire time around. So, all 24 stitches for rows three and four, we're just going to go around and around and around. I'm just going to fast forward through this because I'm just going through the front loop only, and I find that that makes the stitch look a little bit more bubbly and cute. And some of you may have noticed that I also wrap from left to right instead of right to left like most people. I'm dyslexic, so that's how I learned. And I actually like how I prefer, like I prefer how it looks with my amigurumi anyway, so that's just why I stuck with it. You'll also find that your work wants to kind of flip out on itself. You're gonna wanna flip that on its own so that it is the right way out. We're gonna keep going and I'm just going to fast forward through all this, I think. All right, we are on the 
second to last stitch of row four and now for row five we're going to change over to our black yarn so that we can have our little black border along the visor and what i like to do is on the very last stitch of row four i'm going to single crochet and not pull it through so i'm not going to take it and go like that i am instead going to create a small tail like so and i'm going to kind of hold it to the back like that with the black yarn and i'm going to pull that through the last final stitches that makes it so that i have black active yarn happening right there and now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to single crochet around with the black yarn and i'll show you what it looks like when i do the edge here it makes a little a bit more seamless i in my opinion this is just how i like to do it if you want to change over to a different way you can do that i'm just going to single crochet around all 24 of these stitches with the black yarn on our last stitch I'm just gonna single crochet that like normal like so and I'm going to go inside underneath this stitch and I'm gonna single crochet it and now what I like to do is I'm going to take this tail oops not to take it off my hook there we go I'm gonna take my tail I'm gonna leave a good generous tail I've got about 12 inches there for sewing I'm gonna pull that all the way through like so and that is pretty much what I do so you could fasten off but I think actually what I might do is I might just sew it like that I think that would look really good I'm going to try something different this time you can do my fastening off technique if you're interested in that I have a link down below for that but actually I have a last minute decision and I'm not going to use that I'm going to however take my tail and I'm going to for one take this and the active yarn still technically active from the white it's not actually active because we're not doing anything else with it we're going to double knot that and tie it nice and tightly and the tighter you tie it the better it will look right there it looks a bit more seamless and i'm going to double knot it that way it won't come undone as easily as you might think I'm then going to take this is why i didn't cut it earlier because i don't want to have to double cut it it just it just wastes yarn I'm going to cut it like so. I'm then going to cut my tail. Here, I'm going to take this and put it over there. I've got active yarn here. This needs to be cut as well. It doesn't really need to be cut. It can actually just go inside. There we go. So, what I like to do here is I'm going to take my face, my little visor dude, and I'm going to go here on my body for my little amigurumi dude. And I'm going to put him wherever I want him centered. I'm going to take my bamboo stick. I'm going to put it through my two original increases. They should be just slightly larger holes along each side. I'm going to figure out where I want them. Oops, it went in too far. There we go. Not quite yet. We're going to center it. Kind of spread it out a little bit and then stab. Try to give it a little bit of even tensioning. So, I'm going to go sew this on and stuff it just like I did with my backpack, and then I will be right back, and then your little dude is all done. That is pretty much all there is to this little guy. I will say that stuffing definitely matters. Um, I hate stuffing. It's my least favorite part of amigurumi, but it can really make or break the shaping of your amigurumi and your little guy. So, I don't know why I felt the need to add a question mark to every single thing I'm saying, but I did. All right, so basically I'm going to just stab it through the side of my little crewmate, and that's all there is to it. He is all done. I have two of them right here. They're super adorable. I love how these turned out. You can make them in all of the different colors. I don't know why I felt the need to bounce my camera everywhere in the world, but Again, if you're looking for a written tutorial for this, it is on Ravelry. I also have it on Lovecrafts for those that don't go on Ravelry for whatever reason. It will be linked down below. So that is pretty much all there is to this tutorial. Again, thank you to everybody who asked for this tutorial. I'm pretty excited with how they turned out. I am glad that I was introduced to the game and everybody was requesting this. So I actually have been watching like tons and tons of Let's Plays for this 
from Jacksepticeye and Markiplier and Chilled and Z Royal Viking and just a ton of different people that I've never seen play before. So again, thank you to everybody who requested this. You can request down below in the comments what you're interested in. Often we do polls, so make sure to be active in the community tab and let us know what you would like to see in the future. I do take requests, and if I get enough requests for the same thing, I tend to focus my energy on it. I have an entire board above this little desk where I record where I have requests and basically try to keep track and do all that with it. So yeah, pretty much we have a PayPal, we have a Patreon, we have Ravelry, we have Lovecrafts, so we have all kinds of different things. If you're interested in supporting the channel, go ahead and pop down below. We have all the links. Like, subscribe. This is not your first day on YouTube, so you know how to do all those things. Uh, if you like seeing free patterns and free tutorials, please do subscribe. It does help us out. We're getting almost to 34,000 subscribers. That's insane. I'm so excited at that. We have such a huge community underneath Nick Grit, so. Oh, and make sure to play the game, seriously. Like, it's a great game. Until next time, guys. Bye.